Now, I want to also talk about another um, part of your book that I found really interesting, um, where you talk about women suppressing the sexuality of other women, not necessarily men. Um, so you wrote uh, social psychologist Roy Baumeister. Baumeister, yeah. Baumeister and Jean Twinge. Yeah. Wrote a powerful scholarly article where they argued that women actually suppress the sexuality of other women, not men. Their premise was that control of sexuality was historically one of women's only commodities and that women had to control the market, so to speak, by stigmatizing, shaming, and suppressing those who might offer free, cheap, or easy sex. So it's the whole idea of no one's going to buy the cow if they can get the milk for free, which is, mm-hmm. you know, a right. phrase that I fucking hate. I know. And um, you actually also talk about a really interesting conversation that you saw on Twitter between sex workers about, um, you know, uh, uh, pros- their, their rates of prostitution. So I kind of want you to talk a little bit about that because I found that to be really interesting. Yeah, you know, what Baumeister and, 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 and Twinge, you know, found was that um, uh, it is typically women who act to suppress or control the sexuality of other women, not men. And, you know, Mae West said it um, very, very well. She said, you know, men love a slut because they hope history is going to repeat itself. <laughs> Women, you know, women are typically the opponents against porn. Women are typically the opponents against, um, you know, sex work and sex work legalization. Um, because it affects the, 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 the market cost of, of sex. How much are you as a person, as a man, going to invest in order to get sex? Are you going to invest, you know, in a marriage and family and stability? In order to get sex. Now, husbands who do invest in that get more sex. Mm -hmm. The, you know, married men have more sex than single men. Mm -hmm. So marriage is, yeah, really, (laughs) across their lifespan, I swear to God, isn't that interesting? That, you know. It's like the opposite of what most people say. That's (laughs) right. But but if you look over time, they are more likely to have more sex. I mean, one one thing you have to understand, and I'm going to get back to the point, but um, is that throughout human history, um, research with mitochondrial DNA shows that 80% of the human females who ever lived on this planet reproduced, had children. But only 40% of the human males who ever lived on this planet reproduced. Mm. 60% of men died young, died before they could um, reproduce, or never had access to reproduction. Mm-hmm. Um, because powerful, wealthy men kept all the hot chicks to themselves, right? right? With harems and everything else. Uh, you know, the, the traditional marriage in the Bible is polygamy. It's not monogamy. Mm-hmm. Um, so when conservatives tell me they support traditional marriage, I always laugh. Wow, you're into polygamy? How many wives have you got, dude? Um, but coming back to this, this, this female suppression issue is that it, women's only really commodity throughout throughout much of history was sexuality. Now, in societies where women had greater economic independence and greater control of their own economy, there was greater rates of female um, infidelity. Mm-hmm. And even today, as women's income goes up, infidelity goes up, approaching rates of men, because if the woman gets caught, she doesn't lose everything, right? right? And she's not on the street homeless. Um, so – that sex was the only commodity that many women had and they had to control the price of it in order to get the stability and protection and care for themselves and their children. Um, now, we live in a different society though now and we live in a society where women have much greater in- independence and economic abilities of their own. Um, Gail Dines is you know, a very famous anti-porn activist and she's a professor and you know, she's really, really rabid against pornography. But one, one quote that, that she gave one time, I, I, I cite often, she said, you know, feminist sex workers and porn stars are the scabs of feminism. And, you know, a scab is somebody who undercuts your price. A scab is somebody who goes against the union, goes against the collective. Mm-hmm. She's saying that women who sell sex are, you know, undercutting the price mm-hmm. that when other women can charge for sex. Right. She's acknowledging there. This isn't, a, this isn't about sex. This isn't about, about morality. This is about control. Right. Right. Yeah, because I mean the idea if sex is this expensive, 
hard to access thing. You've got to take a girl mm-hmm. out on a certain number of dates. You've got to spend a certain amount of money right. on dinner before she gives it up. But as opposed to if you're just going to give it up for free yeah. on the first date, you know, then you're a slut. It's supposed to be something that you're supposed to hold and and give out sparingly and mm-hmm. begrudgingly. And and you know what what happens when the idea is if if a woman can give sex as freely as a man does, right. like then does she no longer have any value? Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version. I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.